Hello there and welcome to part two of my trap tutorial for Dwarf Fortress. In this one we are going to build three traps step by step together. The first one will be a so-called Doberman bomb, literally a nice usage for caged creatures and turning them into a weaponized trap. Step two will be a classic spear trap and the third trap will be a cave-in trap which I will install over here. So let's get started with the Doberman bomb. As you have seen here I have already constructed one cage. I did that because they are so darn heavy and it takes forever for them to be carried. So you can construct them here in the cage menu and as you see there I have various different cages, empty ones and filled ones. We're using an empty one. When you click it now you can fill it with creatures. Make sure you're not going to put any grazing animals inside there because they will starve unless they're getting fed by your people. If you put it put in cats though or any other creature that is not a grazing animal it will exist in there forever. They'll even grow up in there they're just not going to need any food or whatever. So this is a really, really nice way of dealing with unwanted creatures. Just make sure that you know to that, that you pay attention to the fact that livestock that needs grazing pastures will starve in there. But whatever you want to use for weaponizing the the name Doberman bomb, but derived from using trained war dogs for this, here we're going to make a cat bomb just for the sake of demonstrations. So, I have now assigned a lot of uh, animals to go inside the box. The next step is we're setting up a pressure plate trap right in front of this. You set it up to creatures trigger and make sure you activate whatever creatures you want to be involved there. And for our scenario, we're going to make it, of course, for citizens to trigger. Normally, you wouldn't do that, but for the sake of demonstration, we put it on over there and the it is very simple creatures go inside there the pressure plate will be linked to the cage and as soon as somebody steps on the pressure plate the cage gets deconstructed and the creatures inside will be released you can of course use that for all manner of other creatures as well for example here we have caught ourselves some giant cave toad we could release that as well whatever you do just make sure that you don't pack buddies next to each other like i don't know i haven't tried it but i don't think that put packing trolls and goblins would make them kill each other let me know if you know i i really would like some science about that so last step now you link the plate to the cage and that's pretty much it as soon as these things are linked the next dude walking over the plate will deconstruct the cage animals will go out it's a pretty nice way of getting a first line of defense or a last line of defense whatever you want to use it for you can also flick a switch and raise the bridges here and turn it into a death pit arena you can use this for really various uh, things but i personally love it for the fact that you can park whatever animal you don't want to uh, pay attention to and uh, take care of anymore and you can use it as a weapon so i'm going to leave this as it is here because there's not much more explanation needed this is just the system as it works and it is a pretty pretty wonderful system if you ask me i really like it it's simple it's effective and it does the job quite decently all right so let's get on over to the next thing the spear traps so here we have this room designated for our spear traps what i'm going to do here is a very very simple thing we're going to set up spear traps inside the chamber what you have to do is set up a mechanism that locks the chamber somehow i now the problem is you cannot use the the pressure plates to trigger the locking mechanism because pressure plates they only give an impulse that means they will lock the door for a while and then open the door after a couple of ticks again. Only when you link the doors to a lever, you can keep them closed for an indefinite amount of time. In this scenario here, I'm using retractable bridges as doors because they are nightly indestructible. Okay, so with that being said, let's set up the trap itself. You go on over to traps and we use the upright weapon spike and here we can install up to 10 pieces of weapon per grid so you can use iron spears or you can craft yourself menacing iron spikes whatever you do 
just take care that you don't use materials that are not lethal, because wooden spears are not really powerful. You can use them to create a training room, though, so pack in heavily armored dwarfs and use very, very harmless weaponry, and you have yourself created a wonderful training room. So, these are going to be set up, and what we're requiring next is the trigger. There are two methods how you could do this. Without a trigger, these traps, by the way, are completely useless. They're not going to harm anybody. We can do this in two different ways. Pressure plate inside the room, which means the monsters trapped inside the room would trigger the pressure plate, would trigger the traps themselves. This leads, though, to a problem that there will be a last man standing, because the last creature that triggers the trap can't be standing on a trap at the same time, thus it's not as effective. Instead, we're going to go a couple of levels upstairs now, where my main trajectory of travel lies. Do you see how many people are walking over that square here? So, creatures do trigger, citizens do trigger. We put that up, and the next thing we do afterwards is we take that pressure plate and link it to all those spear traps. Just take a moment now until it is installed, but you certainly already get the idea. The pressure plate will constantly activate and deactivate the trap, which means the spears go down and up and up and down and up and down and up and down until nobody's alive anymore. So this is a really, really cool way. So we go here for the pressure plate. Now we go downstairs again to the actual trap room and we now link the plate to all those traps. So the downside of the system is very clear. It is a very, very resource-intense system. If you use such a large room here, you could already see, we could pack in up to 30 spikes per line here. So we got, I haven't counted it, but I'm pretty sure that we could easily fit over 300 spikes inside this room. This would make a really deadly trap if you get it done, but it also requires tons of mechanic mechanisms and whatnot. So. It's costly, but I do like it. I especially like the idea of my dwarves casually killing off goblins by just entering their fortress. So, let's go over to the third part, the cave-in trap. So, we're going to make that happen inside this tunnel. So, above that, I have carved out this area. And the first thing we're going to do is we define where the trap will happen. I'm going to have a, uh, a grid here in this area. And in the center of this thing, the first thing I do is I build the a support. I do this because I this way you can avoid your dwarfs killing themselves while they're building the trap. Really important. Start with the support. Otherwise, you can't create a cave-in before you want to create a cave-in. So as, the, as this has been built, we now know the position is here. We go upstairs. It's above that boulder. And now we channel out a five-wide area. There we go. Since the pillar is now going to hold these areas, these areas are held by this piece of floor. This is held by the pillar. No risk involved. We're safe here. So this is very important that we tunnel down because we will build three pieces of floor exactly above the pillar. And if we don't get rid of the walls on this level, like these walls here and there, the entire thing won't collapse accordingly. Okay, next thing we require is going to be one little bridge. I'm using a retractable one for our dwarves to get back and forth because right now we wouldn't be able to build any any floor tiles here because we couldn't reach. The fun part about bridges is they cannot support any piece of floor. Although they allow you to build a floor, a piece of floor, while you're standing on the bridge, it won't hold a piece of floor. The uh, the uh, support down there will hold the piece of floor. All right, I hope this does make sense somehow. If not, please uh, just ask away. The next thing we're doing is we're going to assign jobs now for the construction of that floor all the way over here, just waiting for that bridge to be done because that's... Uh, actually the last part we require, but let's draw that over here. Ah, no access. As you see, before the bridge has been finished, we can't even assign this to be built. But what we can do is we can bring up the mechanisms here. One lever for the sake of demonstration, but the actual trigger will be a pressure plate. I'm going to bring up the real trigger and the lever will be just a demonstration lever. So wait a second, I don't want to make this out of clay stone, uh, out of uh, 
MacKline because that's just uh, too similar. Let's use, yeah, why not? Let's use bars. So it's going to be definitely visible. All right, so ignore the lever. This is the only part for the demonstration routine. We're going to set up now a pressure plate right in front of the support. It does. It gets triggered by creatures and it goes right there. You can make these traps, of course, also wider. Just make sure that you add in supports as needed because the moment a piece of floor isn't held by a support or any wall right next to it it will collapse so now we got the setup together the pressure plate ain't ready yet we're going to link the lever now to the support because just like cages when you link a support to a mechanism you create a switch that flicks a deconstruction so the moment we flick now the lever, as soon as it is linked, it will deconstruct the pillar. The rest, you can already imagine. Of course, the uh, pressure plate would do the exact same thing. Enemy goes up, uh, goes up front there, and then it triggers the deconstruction of the pillar, and floor plates fall on your head. It's a wonderful, it's a really, really wonderful, powerful thing, and I'm going to demonstrate to you in a second. Meanwhile, this, I, th I bet, has been linked up together already. Let's see how it goes up and down while we're waiting for the other stuff to happen. So, as you see there, the spear trap ain't that much of a fast turner. It's actually quite a, uh, quite a slow thing. Here we go. So, it does take a while until the spikes go up and down. If this does take too long for you, feel free to use a lever instead that gets flicked repeatedly can go faster this way okay so enough of the waiting time has been uh, brought up there so let's bring up the really really important patrol route for our veterans here to show and demonstrate what this trap can do we're going to let those poor suckers patrol on over there and uh, that's all we require so or, or soldiers go over there, and then I'm going to demonstrate to you what kind of impact a cave-in trap has, because it's actually quite surprising. So, there we go. Who's going to pull that lever? Just waiting for somebody to arrive. I always love the moment before I flick the switch on a trap. You know, here we go. This guy pulls the lever. So, watch this. So, we see there, this guy's dead, this guy's dead. Down below this guy is another dead guy. So, when you check this out, here you see that the, the damage there is insane. Limbs get annihilated and crushed by that. The cave-in traps are powerful enough to put a serious threat to pretty much everything in the game. I love these, but uh, pay attention to... The fact that they can kill your own people as well but they are really really useful and so far as they can be rigged in a way that they can be a wonderful last line of defense for your base so thanks for watching everybody i hope you found that helpful feel free to leave me your comments down below let me know what kind of traps you would like to see explained in another video feel free to leave a thumbs up on that and consider subscribing it would be awesome to see you guys more often around here so have a wonderful day and see you next time.